Hey there, welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Um, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, let me get it up here. We're gonna be working on this cute little cabinet. Oh my gosh. So very cute. It's got uh, one shelf that goes across the inside. It's got the towel bar underneath. Um, very cute, very sweet, very heavy. And so it's a little awkward maybe to be working on, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna make it work. Okay. Sheesh. All right. So what I have done is I have cleaned it off. It was a little dirty to start, but you know, that's the way things go. Um, it's got cute little knobs that, uh, I'm a little leery to take off in case it closes because I'm not sure I'll get it open, but I'm gonna be taking them off. The first part of this is I'm gonna paint it um, two coats inside and out in beadboard. I'm not leaving it total white, um, but that's my base, that's my foundation. And um, so yeah, that's, that's what I need to do to get started. Hey, okay. So, um, put you off to the side. So, nothing more difficult than, okay, like I'm looking around going, I had a paintbrush here. So, nothing more difficult than getting the paint on. Obviously, a little bit involved from the standpoint of inside and out, letting some pieces dry, um, you know, edging and stuff, but really not all that challenging. When it comes to shelving, I'm not gonna paint the ends because I need to, to ensure that I don't have so much paint on the sides and on the ends because that would be four layers, two layers on this and two layers on the insides that then that becomes eight layers of paint that might make it a tough fit. So I'm not going to paint those edges much the same as, you know, we'll see how it goes on these. I'm going to have to look and see how tight a fit these are um, to go in because once you start adding that paint, you know, if it gets too thick, nothing's gonna close right, in which case then I'm stuck having to sand them back and then repaint them again. So we'll see how that one looks and I'll let you know. But generally if I'm painting shelves, I get uh, the two edges and the top done, let it dry, flip it over. I do my, my bottom and then I've got the one coat done and I come back in with my second coat. For something like the shelving or the inside walls, it may, because this is a darker wood, it may take three coats. White is just such a pure color. It doesn't have all kinds of layers of other colors to create its um, depth that very often it's not unusual on any paint line to have to go with three and sometimes even four coats of white. So this will definitely take at least two where I'm not adding any secondary color over top. So the outside is gonna have some secondary color. So on the inside, we'll see how it looks. Not worried about the back fully because we still have stuff to do to the inside back. You know, just cause, just cause you can't just leave it alone and do nothing. You could, but that's not really me. <laughs> so I'm gonna get the rest all painted up so that we can move on with the rest of the project. Now that I have this all painted white, I want to switch it up a little bit. I am going to distress the outside of this a fair bit. We had dark underneath um, because it's going to be pristine white in the center. Okay, with one exception, we're going to work on the backboard a little bit. But what I have here is I have some kind of, oh my 
almost like a light farmhousey green that I've mixed up for a different project. And it's almost like a paste now. It's very thick and very creamy. You could just use regular paint. You don't have to have it thickened. You could thicken your paint up with um, paint frosting by DIY. It's a paint thickener and it will do it, you know, almost instantly, kind of within 20 minutes. But what I want to do is I want to take, I'm just trying to see how you can see and I can see what the heck I'm doing. I have a little bit on my palette knife and I'm going to push this against and I'm just going to drag it. I, I want this to kind of look like it's been painted, it's worn, and especially once I start to um, distress it. This will all kind of wear in. So I want to make sure that I'm kind of working in rows. It's just going to kind of end up looking almost like I've got some planks or that it's working on boards. I can go from the bottom to the top. And I'm just going to do this on the outside of the piece. A little more challenging when we get to the rail. All right, remember that I have that towel rack down there. So, but we'll be doing kind of the same method so that it's all sort of tied in together. And you can see that we get heavy splotches, lighter splotches, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm just kind of using this as a method to kind of age the piece a little bit, wear it down a little bit add a little bit more dimension. I don't need to have it everywhere. And I can certainly look for some spots that I don't and go in and kind of add a little bit. If you want even more textured look, then you can do some swipes the other direction as well. And that's gonna give you a little bit more to go on. So again, depending upon what that finished look is that you're after. So now I'm just gonna do this, <laughs> um, make it look way less pristine. I'm gonna do this to the entire surface, let it dry fully, uh, because I definitely want it dry before I look at sanding. But you can see, you can see the difference. Before I start sanding anything, because that's going to make a mess and I have to sand the inside anyway, I want to get started on this backing. Rather than just leaving it all plain white, what I want to do is add in a paint inlay. So we're going to be using the Paradise Paint Inlay because I have, I have some extra sheets from it. And I think that these soft colors are going to go well and just kind of perk up the backing. So what I am going to do before we add anything in is I have to see kind of how it's going to fit in, how much I have to piece, where I have to piece it, and get all of those cut down into size. That one seems a little small. This one I can at least fit here and then just piece on this side. But if you want it to go edge to edge, you can see that on each of the edges, there's a little bit of a blank space. So I'm going to trim all those off so that when I try and match them up, that looks like there's a match. I just have to see how it works size-wise, but I'm going to I'm going to cut all my pieces out and then I'll be back to show how we're going to apply this. Bear in mind, I'm going to be applying it this way, image side down. Now the paint inlays are different than the transfer because we're not going to rub off this image. This is artist grade paint. What we need to do is embed it into a wet surface into wet paint. So I'm going to repaint this backing in white and get 
that ready for our inlay. And this paint is the DIY, so it is chalk, uh, sorry, it's clay-based. It's similar to a chalk paint in the sense that it does not have a built-in sealer. So that makes our job a little bit easier in using the inlays, but it does mean that we still need to have it going into a wet surface. And you don't want to skimp at this stage. So you don't want just a little tiny bit of paint. We need that artist grade paint to have something to sit down into and grab hold of. And I just wanna make sure I got something in there on all my edges. And so while that's wet, we need to lay our inlay down. Okay, that's, that's not bad. Awesome. And then, because I cut off those edges, I want to match that up. And I wanna get them fairly close, maybe even a little overlapped, just so that that looks like a continuous pattern. Now, because I'm gonna be distressing this, I don't mind about whether or not there's wrinkles in there. But then I'm going to rub that down in, make sure that it's all pushed down into that paint. that it's all in contact. So I wanna do it gently. I don't wanna lift it. All right, and now that that's down, what I wanna do is I wanna take a spray mister or a Dave Preg, and I want to dampen this paper. So I'm activating now the rest of that paint, you can see that it all goes kind of translucent and nice and bright now. So I want to ensure that all that artist grade paint is getting activated. And just nice and light. And then I like to just kind of go over it again in case some of it lifts during this process. Again, just making sure that it's in contact with my surface. If any of this bubbles up, like it has a tendency to do in a couple of spots, then that paint is lifted away from the surface and it won't adhere and therefore won't release into my paint. And that's what I wanna do, is I wanna leave this image behind. So what we do now is we just wait. We let this dry fully. Because I do not have a paint with a top coat, I can walk in away and leave this for days if I need to. I'm not going to <laughs> deal with it today, but I don't have a problem in my timing. If I had a built-in top coat, I need to go in before that top coat seals. Otherwise, this paper is now adhered to it. So I don't have an issue because of the type of paint, but bear in mind that if you're doing it into a top coat or a paint with a top coat, the process is a little different. You can see that this paper is mostly dry. Um, it started to go pale again. So the next step in removing it is to wet it again. What we wanna do is um, kind of saturate or just kind of moisten that paint that is sitting right up against that paper so that it will release the paper when we pull it up. So we wanna lightly moisten it. And again, you could use the mister, you could use um, a damp sponge. You don't need to saturate, like totally soak it. But we need it to get just a little bit wet enough. And I just wanna make sure I get the corners. I think that was my head bumping you guys, sorry. And then we wanted to let it sit for maybe about 20 to 30 seconds just so that um, it has a chance to kind of really moisten 
and sink into that paint a bit. And I just have an X-Acto knife out because I need to try and lift this paper and I thought I'd try from where that join was. And just get a little bit of it up. I don't have nails. Okay, I can't even reach that. And uh, now I'm going, oh, tweezers. Oh, here, I, I've got some hemostats. Don't ask me why, I just do. There we go, now I can get it. So we just wanna pull this loosely. Now you'll see that there's still paint on that paper that I'm lifting, in which case I can now set this aside and let it dry so I didn't get any of that image sitting there because it wasn't in good enough contact. But I can set this page aside and I can reuse it until there's no more paint on there or the image is too faint. And really that just ends up being my call. Let me just set this off. And because I'm gonna be distressing this a lot, I don't mind that it's a little bit worn. It already looks kind of distressed. There we go. So again, I'm gonna set this aside, paint side up to allow it to dry, and then I'll put it back into my stash for me to be able to reuse. Each subsequent use will be a little bit more faded than the original was, but there you go. I'm just gonna let this dry, and then I can start sanding back all of the rest of the piece. I just want this to dry though, so that all the dust doesn't stick to it first. All right, I have 180 grit sandpaper and all I wanna do now is sand down all of this rough looking outside exterior. I will be hand sanding on the inside um, and I'll be using a 240 grit for that because I don't need it to be I don't need it to be super distressed on the inside. I just want to smooth out the texture. Here, I want to do a little bit more distressing. So I'll use this for the outside of here. I'll hand sand here where it's more delicate and get that all done. And then I'm just going to use clear DIY wax to seal. Let's take a look at our finished little cabinet. <clears throat> okay. This has been sanded and waxed. Ooh, and most of the excess taken off. Just looking at a couple of little spots here. All right. So here's the little cabinet. Just nice and super sweet. Really what we were doing more than anything else with this is brightening it up. Taking a really dark, heavy looking piece and giving it some distressing, so giving it a little bit of age, but giving it more of kind of that nice light kind of country feel. We've got that paint inlay on the inside, just adding a little bit of interest, but not overwhelming the piece, right? So we didn't want something that was super crazy on the inside, didn't go necessarily with the rest of it. You can see that the finish um, we've got some of that green blue showing so it looks like it was painted previously and that it's worn down. That was kind of the look that I was after. Um, if you do something like that and you sand it and you still find that maybe those palette knife streaks are a little too heavy, just whitewash it or do a white dry brushing over it or something. I'm saying white because the paint color was white, but you could dry brush over it. And that's going to, if you did it with the base color, it's gonna soften that out a little bit more as well. I'll take some pics for, for you on this one. If you haven't tried to paint in light, then do. Uh, you know, you saw that it didn't um, adhere perfectly for me. I'm okay with that because it's a painted surface. We're going for age, we're going for wear. I would say with the paint inlays, don't ever look for it to be absolutely 
perfect, certainly not on your first attempts, but that, that worn aged look is perfect for them. You're gonna get some little wrinkles, you're gonna get some little uh, creases that just add to it, and then you can treat it as any painted surface, meaning you can distress it, you can age it, you can seal it. If you are worried, some people when they wax it, um, find that it lifts. I find that maybe it smears or it lifts a little bit if I haven't allowed it to dry fully overnight. You can tell by my clothes, this is the same day. So, as much as I waxed it, what I did do first was I did a quick spray of a polyacrylic. So, I did a quick spray just of the inlay section, let that dry, and then I waxed over the piece. And that's a great little trick for anything that you're afraid is going to smear, even if you want to have it as a wax finish, ultimately. Hope you picked up a couple of little tips and tricks along the way. Take a couple of closer picks for you. Let me know what you think. And definitely tune in for the next one. Look forward to seeing you there. Until then, take care. <laughs>